Okay, good afternoon everyone and welcome to this webinar to launch Somerset's Graduated Response Tool. I'm Jo Milam and I'm an advisory teacher for the Virtual School and Learning Support team here in Somerset. And can I also introduce you to Zoe Carrera, who will also be presenting the webinar with me today. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm also an advisory teacher with the Virtual School Learning Support Team and have been part of the steering group for Somerset's Graduated Response Tool. Thank you, Zoe. OK, right, so we're going to turn off our cameras now in order to preserve the internet connection. OK, so thank you to everyone for joining today's webinar. Uh, in order for the webinar to run smoothly, can we ask that your microphones and cameras are set to off? Uh, the purpose of the webinar is an information session and as such, the chat function is not available and we also won't be taking any questions in today's webinar. The PowerPoint slides, they are currently on the local offer so um, please feel free to go to the local offer where you'll see the PowerPoint slides to support you with today's webinar. And also uh, a recording of the webinar will be available on the local offer after today's last webinar session. Uh, if on the unlikely event you have technical issues, uh, please can you leave and rejoin again or failing that, contact the virtual school admin team via this email address. OK, although um, we've allowed 90 minutes for this webinar, it may finish slightly earlier than this, um, but it will give you an opportunity to look through the tool and accompanying documents offline. So invites to join the webinar were sent to school colleagues, governors, support services, governor services and health and social care professionals. And I can see that we have a broad range of those invited us joining today. So please welcome. So that you are aware, um, we have separate webinar sessions running for parent carers in May, and we will have more information regarding this at the end of today's webinar. We would also like to thank those of you who have contributed to the process. We had two public consultations, uh, and they were held with over 90 responses. A range of professionals have been present within our steering and working groups, and their expertise alongside input from parent carers has been essential throughout the development process. Okay, so the aims of today's webinar. So it's, we're going to sort of look really of why and how the Somerset's Graduate Response Tool is being created. We're going to provide a tour of the document. We're going to look at how the document will support you in your role. Um, a look at the supporting resources available, including templates and checklists. And also we're going to look at what's next for the document. OK, so as you can see from the slide, the uh, where and where can you find the graduated response tool? So it sits within the local offer website. There is a direct link to it on the slide here in the pink box and feel free to click on the screen where you'll find the tool, accompanying documents and the PowerPoint slides for the webinar. If you're not aware of Somerset's local offer website, it aims to provide clear, comprehensive, accessible and up-to-date information about the available provision and how to access it. It explains how decisions are made and who buy. It sets out with clear pathways for action and directions about what to do and where to go if you have concerns. So our suggestion would be to save the link to the Somerset Graduate Response Tool and accompanying documents as a favourite rather than downloading the document to ensure that you have the most up-to-date version. However, if you haven't used the direct link, if you type in Somerset's local offer into your search engine, 
you'll find the website. And you'll then see the screen shown on the left hand side of the slide. From Somerset's local offer, click on the education tile where I've got the pink arrow directing you, which will take you to the next screen. And then if you see the snipped visual on the right hand side of the slide, that's what you'll then look at. From there, you will see the fourth box where you will find a pink link. And if you click on this, it will take you to the what to expect from education page. You can also access this page directly um, on the link in the pink box, as I've described previously. And again, like I said, it will be really helpful to save this link to your favourites bar. So this is what the page will look like on the local offer. And you will see that there's a copy of the whole tool by clicking on the pink button. There are also several supporting documents which will take you through today's webinar. OK, so why has Somerset's graduate response tool been created? So we'll start with a recap of the rationale around the redevelopment of what the were the core standards. And as you can see from the slide, uh, the key elements of the rationale are that there was a need for a co-produced guide for the graduated response to special education needs in Somerset. There was a need for a document that was created by and accessible to all stakeholders. There was a need to improve consistency of the support and provision in Somerset schools. And the rationale was developed based on feedback from all stakeholders and is part of the written statement of action. And if you'd like to find out more about the written statement of action, there is a link to the document on the last bullet point on the slide. OK, so how was the tool created? So we want to provide you with a bit of context for how we arrived at this final document. So the first stage, a steering group was initially set up with representatives from the virtual school and learning support team. And that's who is Zoe and myself. Statutory SEND, Parent Carer Forum, the Educational Psychology Service and a school SENCO. And the aim was to outline the time frame and tasks at each stage of the development. And there are representatives from all stakeholders to ensure that there is co-production at every stage. The second stage, so that was a draft document, was created using example content from a range of other local authority examples. And the first public consultation with all stakeholders took place to gather the feedback with a focus particularly on format and layout and not content at this stage. The third stage, so next the steering group set up four working groups for each broad area of need to write the content for the quick checkers and broad areas of need tables. And again, we'll talk more about that a little bit later. Representatives from the steering group were present at each working group alongside representatives from Parent Care Forum, Educational Psychology Service, school SENCOs, and expertise from service team professionals linked to the broad areas of need. For example, speech and language therapy health colleagues and advisory teachers from the autism and communication team who particularly worked for the communication and interaction working group. A fourth stage, so a second public consultation took place for all stakeholders, and this time the focus was on content. The fifth stage, so working groups met to make edits um, collaboratively to the content based on the feedback for the public consultation. And then the sixth stage, a rough cut was sent to the communication team to check for accessibility, clarity and presentation before the final published documents were produced. OK, so both Zoe and myself will show you how to use sections of the Somerset Graduate Response Tool later in the webinar when we'll take you through a tour of the tool. 
but so we're going to focus particularly at the minute is how you might um, use a document to support you with your role. So this um, slide shows an extract from page five. And uh, there's some information in about how to use the document, but also I just want you to uh, signpost you to um, the three boxes on the right hand side, pink box being universal support. And you'll notice there's an icon and uh, so really just to look out for this universal support icon to help signpost you through the tool. There's then the uh, green box with a green arrow pointing there. And again, sort of look out for the SEN support icon, which is the three people. And again, that's going to help to signpost you through the tool. And also there are hyperlinks throughout the document in the first few pages, but also through um, the broad areas of need, particularly um, to look out for a range of resources and other um, materials you may use. So how might this document support you with your role? So class teachers might use this document as a checklist to support your thinking before discussion with parent carers and SENCOs. Schools generally might use this as specific guidance for how to support in the classroom at a universal and SEN support level. Parent carers, so they may use this as guidance regarding what might be in place to support in schools and an understanding of the graduate response to special education needs. Social workers, again, may use this as guidance regarding what might be in place to support in schools and an understanding of the graduate response to special education needs. Health colleagues, so again, they may use it as guidance regarding a broad, uh, sorry, a broad view of what might be in place to support in schools and an understanding of the graduated response to special education needs. The advisory services, so this may be used to um, signpost schools, parent carers and other colleagues to what might be available in school. So for example, through school discussions, through reports, etc. And statutory send, um, our colleagues there, then may be able to use uh, the document to signpost schools, parent carers and other colleagues to what might be available in school at a universal and SEN support level of need. OK, so I'm now going to hand you over to Zoe, who will take you for a tour of the tool and accompanying documents. Thank you, Zoe. OK, so we're going to have a look um, into the main graduated response tool now. The first thing that I want to draw your attention to, as shown on the slide, is the contents page, which is the second page within the document. You may not want to read Somerset's graduated response tool cover to cover, and you actually you're unlikely to need to read it in that way, as it's designed to be a tool rather than a document that you read and then sort of put away. Um, it should be an ongoing tool for your practice. So just looking at that contents page, you'll notice there are several guidance pages at the beginning of the document and they briefly cover areas such as defining the graduated response and assess plan do review cycles. There's a section outlining expectations for various key roles within schools such as head teachers, SENCOs, teachers, governors, etc. all drawn from key statutory documents. There's a page regarding education, health and care plans and um, a page on funding for special educational needs. These are brief overviews that have been put into this document to support you in using and understanding Somerset's graduated response tool. They are not the kind of the comprehensive um, information for each of uh, those areas. And where there are more detailed documents available, such as Somerset's effective support document for SEND, we've hyperlinked them within that relevant page. So, you know, you might go into the EHCP page and see that there's hyperlinks to other relevant information. Um, also, EHCP information that's available on the local offer, for example. The first, the first page after that contents page is a glossary just to help with those numerous acronyms that we use in the world of education and particularly special educational needs. 
and the contents page there is hyperlinked to the relevant pages within the document so you can click on it and it will take you directly to the relevant page so i'm just going to highlight and talk you through a couple of those introductory pages initially just to support your understanding of how to use the main section of the graduated response tool there go, these pages will be particularly helpful in supporting your understanding of what a graduated response looks like in practice as well as giving an understanding of how the assess plan do review process fits within that graduated response to special educational needs so this on the slide there is taken from page seven of the tool and I would suggest that page seven and eight are helpful to look at prior to the main broad areas of need section, because these give that overview um, of the graduated response before you get into the detail that comes later in the document. So what you're looking at here is a pyramid, as you can see, it shows that the graduated response is a cumulative process by which I mean the provision that provision is put in place at that base pink universal level. That's the foundation for all support for children within schools. If needed, SEN support is added. That sort of turquoise middle band of the pyramid. So that's in addition to that universal classroom support. And then if required, because needs cannot be met at universal with SEN support an education health and care plan needs assessment could be requested which is the information in the uh, top bluish color there on the pyramid so as I said, it's really important that you that you understand kind of the the cumulative process of the graduated response before getting into the detail that we set out later in the tool so I mentioned page eight is really useful to make sure you have a look at and are clear on before you get into the main detail, because this covers the assess plan do review process. This is referred to in the co code of practice within the SEN support level of, of um, special educational needs and provision. So that middle banding of our pyramid. So the, the image that you can see on the slide there we've created to illustrate the assess plan do review process. You'll notice though we also have the pink circle there indicating that actually the starting point is universal provision for all. Um, we felt it important to include that here just to, as a reminder that it is a cumulative process. So the arrows guide you through that cycle and process at SEN support. By way of example, if there's a possible SEN concern. The universal support should be tried first as per the pink circle where this does not have the desired impact on progress. The student would move through to SEN support, which would require that assess plan do review process or cycle. And whatever your role in relation to children and young people, it's really clear that you it's really important that you're clear on the graduated response and assess plan do review as you are likely to be able to contribute to the information that's required and would inform that assess plan do review cycle um, and you know that information is going to be used to successfully meet children's needs and ensure that they make positive progress in their education just like to draw your attention to the arrows coming from the review um, part of the cycle we also felt very important to show clearly that there's a way out of that cycle. It's not a never ending circle once you're in SEN support. So we're illustrating there that at every review, there needs to be a reflection on whether there is a need to remain at that SEN support level or whether actually that child is making sig uh, significant progress and therefore they can go to that universal level back to the pink. And S, this should be considered at every review just to avoid children and young people becoming unnecessarily stuck on the SEM register. We have provided template documents to support recording, uh, support the recording of uh, intervention and outcomes at universal and SEN support. And we'll guide you through those supporting documents and templates later on in the webinar. Okay. 
So page 17 in the uh, Somerset Graduated Response Tool document has uh, several pages which are titled the Quick Checkers. These are really useful documents. They came out of consultation. The first consultation Joe mentioned where we shared some examples from other local authorities and the feedback was that uh, this sort of thing, uh, this quick checker was a really useful tool to have within our Somerset's version. So these could be used to stimulate, organise or categorise really initial concerns into those four broad areas of special, special educational needs as set out in the code of practice. So cognition and learning, communication and interaction, sensory, physical and social, emotional, mental health. For example, where a child or young person isn't making progress and there's a possibility this is due to a special educational need, a teacher, class teacher may use a quick checker to help categorise or organise their, their concern to see whether actually it's coming from perhaps a cognition and learning um, concern or social, emotional, mental health, etc. Each of the four broad areas are colour coded and those colours are consistent throughout the document and supporting documents just to help you navigate through them. And the quick checkers were written by the working groups that Jo mentioned when she talked you through the creation process. So children and young people, they of course, they don't always fit neatly into one category, they rarely do. And they may cross over several of those four broad areas of need, but the quick checker may help um, sort of focus which of those four broad areas to focus on in more detail, uh, looking to look at specific barriers and strategies later in the document. Because feedback from the consultations was that this would be a really useful part of the tool, we also decided to create it as a standalone document, an accompanying supporting document. So the quick checker is available as a standalone document on the local offer web page. So it can be just printed or passed to class teachers as part of that universal or initial concern stage of the graduated response. It's not used to be um, just and just a final point really on this. It's not a comprehensive or diagnostic tool. It's just a purpose there to help organise those initial concerns. So from page 22 is what we might sort of think of as the main bulk of the document or the main sort of area of the tool that you would refer to and use. This is also organised and split into the four broad areas of SEN. And in the contents page, you'll, you'll be able to click on the specific area that you want to look at out of those four and it will take you to it, as I mentioned earlier. So it's from this section that you, you would perhaps be using uh, the document to support your work with children and young people. Jo touched on this earlier in terms of how you would use the document for your role and I'm going to actually show you how you would use it in practice now. So each of the four broad areas is introduced with a definition of that area of SEN from the code of practice. This here is taken from communication and interaction. And we also have some quotations from Somerset young people and children around their experiences of being a student in Somerset with additional needs. Just introductory pages there first. And then we move on to the main tables. So these are the tables that you, you would use in your roles with young people. They're colour coded in line with the quick checkers. And we have used those, obviously those symbols Joe mentioned earlier, such as the sort of world symbol for universal support uh, to help guide you through the document. So this is an extract of the universal section for cognition and learning. The table would help support to identify barriers under that area of SEN, as well as relevant support strategies that could be used in the classroom at that universal or sometimes referred to as high quality teaching level of support. So if there is a concern around a child's uh, cognition and learning and there may be an SEN, the first sort of wider column, not the little one that says universal, goes through and lists possible things you may see, so the barriers you may see um, within cognition and learning. 
and then the, the column what can help strategies gives a list of strategies that relate to the barriers on the left. So you're seeing there just a little extract around spelling difficulties and some classroom spelling strategies that could be tried. So this should be helping there with identification of specific needs. But also it should support with discussions and decisions around which classroom strategies to try where bar barriers have been identified. And this information, excuse me, has been created by those working group of professionals and um, parent carers. They are not, though, just to know an entirely exhaustive list. Of course, we could almost go on infinitely with support strategies and, and there may be other strategies in place in school that are being tried or used with success. We will review the whole document regularly um, and to try and keep it up to date as possible. And if you come across a strategy or an idea that's particularly effective, you can let us know via um, the MS forms feedback uh, that we will just show you towards the end of the webinar. So just a scenario would be if there's a concern a young person may have SEN around literacy and is not making progress, perhaps the quick checker was used to help define that a little bit. Um, the teacher might use then use this section um, to try and pin down more specific barriers and then they could look at those support strategies in the column to, to give things a go to try and address that. Again, this universal section for each of the four broad areas of need is available as a separate extract document that could be edited because feedback sort of suggested schools may want to highlight, edit or um, annotate this if they're thinking about a particular young person. And I'll cover the I'll cover the supporting documents in more detail later, um, but this is this is part of it uh, that makes up one of our supporting documents. And just by way of another example, slightly different colour here because we're in communication and interaction, still got the universal symbol there. That this is an extract from the communication and interaction section of the universal area of. Um, broad areas of need, but it could be used in much the same way as cognition and learning. First column to identify specific barriers and then the, the final column there to su identify support strategies that could be put in place in the classroom. It's also just worth noting where they've been available. We have provided hyperlinks to resources that, that are mentioned um, within the document. This came from our initial feedback to, uh, from the first consultation in that having that direct link to click on would be really helpful but obviously that's caveated with obviously links sometimes change so we will be keeping them as up to date as we can but you know you must be aware that that su there may be some that do change before we get a chance to update them okay i'm now just going to hand over to joe who's going to talk you through the scn support sections within the broad areas of need. Thank you Zoe, thank you. OK, so um, as you can see from the slide, this is an extract from page 56 of the broad areas of need and looking at the sensory and physical section. Um, you'll probably notice if you've managed to look at the Somerset Graduated Response Tool already that physical, uh, sensory and physical has been broken uh, into sections. So this is from the physical needs section. There's also visual impairment and hearing impairment. So just as uh, Zoe has described, you'll notice that the sections are colour coded in line with the colours in the quick checkers for ease of reference. You'll notice the SEN support icon and banner down the side of the document to help signpost you when you're working within the tool. Um, and you will also notice that the table is missing the barriers column. As those barriers will look the same at both universal and SEN support levels. And it will be the strategies used that will look different. So it's important to note that universal strategies should remain in place and further SEN support strategies will build on and will be in addition to the universal strategies. 
It'll also be important to embed strategies and give them time to be effectively implemented and tried before reviewing. And this information then will be able to evidence a persistent difficulties. So thinking of a particular scenario then, what we might be using um, this uh, part of the document. So perhaps where limited or no progress is made using universal strategies, it will be important that further assessment of barriers take place. And this assessment will inform which strategies at both universal and SEN support should be put into place. And it will be important that progress is monitored through successive assess plan do review cycles. So for instance, despite the use of universal strategies to support a child and young person's coordination and mobility, for example, concerns still remain. So as such, using the tool then on page 56, the school may look to provide access to an intervention such as learn to move for a child or young person to support their needs further. OK, so as you can see from the slide, this is an extract um, from the broad areas of need for social and emotional and mental health section. And this is page 73. You will notice that the sections are color coded again in line with the colors and the quick checkers for ease of reference. And again, it could be used in the same way to identify strategies and interventions that could be put into place at an SEN support level. So then thinking about um, we're limited or no progress is made using universal strategies, it will be important that further assessment of barriers take place. And this assessment will inform which strategies at both universal and SEN support should be put into place. And again, it will be important that progress is monitored through successive assess plan do review cycles. So, for instance, despite the use of universal strategies to support a child and young person, they find it increasingly difficult to manage the school day without behaviour incidences. So, as such, using the tool on page 73 and where I've got the pink arrow at the bottom part of the page, the school could plan regular meet and greet opportunities that involves key adults, which is recorded on a support plan and is provided with a specific outcome in mind. OK, so there's further signposting at the end of each broad area of need, as you can see from the slide um, on the screen, to a range of assessment materials, resources and professional organisations who could provide further advice and support. So as you can see from the slide, there's an example from both the social and emotional mental health and cognition and learning sections on the slide. The image on the left shows a range of assessment resources and hyperlinks to support schools with identifying barriers at the universal and also at the SEN support levels. And the image on the right shows further signposting to professional organisations with hyperlinks who could provide further advice and support. And the signposting has been developed through the working groups, the steering group and public consultation feedback. So as you can see, there are hyperlinks to a variety of either assessment materials, um, books, etc., but also from the, in the how can I find out more? sections at the end of each broad area of need, but also who else can support and who else can help. So again, some useful signposting points to, again to various professional organisations and um, support strategies, etc. As uh, Zoe described earlier on, so hyperlinks have been included where available which could be helpful for you. But if you come across a broken link, please do let us know and we'll show you how to provide feedback later in the webinar. OK, so I'm now going to hand you back over to Zoe as she will provide an explanation of the supporting documents. OK, 
So we've mentioned them a little bit already, uh, but I'm actually just going to sort of talk you through some of the supporting documents that have been created alongside Somerset's graduated response tool. All of these are available on the local offer from the same link that we popped on the slides earlier, and it's there again. I do suggest, as Joe mentioned, that you save it to your favourites bar. Um, because it's if you Google it, it's not always uh, taking you sort of straight there if you Google Somerset's graduated response tool. So do do use the link here and then save it. So let's have a look at the supporting documents. This is a screenshot from the local offer page. So the arrows there just show you uh, the, the pink text and it's that that you click on to open each of the supporting documents. There's an editable version that's either a Word or publisher, as well as a PDF version. With the Microsoft publisher versions, I suggest you download them in order to open and edit them. They're templates to be edited, so uh, you know, please do, do use them in that way. We're also working on developing formats that are more widely accessible for all users, such as text only versions of these documents. So we are aware some people are using devices that are not compatible with Publisher. So the first supporting document to draw your attention to is the graduated response flowchart. This could be used to support understanding around the actions that might happen within a graduated response to SEN. You'll notice that they are colour coded in line with the universal SEN support and high needs levels from the pyramid on page seven that I showed earlier. And this really is, it's a suggested step by step guide to exactly what might happen at each stage of the graduated response. Some schools have something similar in place already just to support with staff, parent carers and young people and professionals in understanding what happens when and who does what essentially within that graduated response. So this is designed to be editable and act as a template that could be used or adapted by schools. This, what you're seeing on the screen is the second page of the document when you open it online. The first is almost a cover page because there's acknowledgement on there that um, for most children where there's a concern, a school would work through a graduated response in line with the code of practice to ensure that relevant and purposeful action to identify, assess and meet special educational needs has been taken. And as per the code of practice, though, in a small minority of cases, children or young people may demonstrate such significant difficulties that a school or other provider may consider it impossible or inappropriate to carry out its full chosen assessment procedure. That's a direct quote from uh, the code of practice that is captured on that introductory page just to acknowledge that whilst the majority of the time a graduated response is, is, is needed and appropriate, but there are um, those, as they say, a um, small number of cases where there's an exception to that. The next slide just shows you a slightly bigger <laughs> um, broken down version of that flow chart. So it really is that step by step guide that could be used to work through actions to make sure that a really robust and clear graduated response to SEN has happened within schools. So that you work from the top, the pink section relates to actions at that universal level. The dark pink banners throughout um, just indicate that there needs to be that review, including parents, uh, carers and children and young people. Then it goes through the actions that might take place at SCN support. And finally, if an EHCP needs assessment uh, request is, is required in the blue at the end there. So I alluded to this document earlier when I was talking you through the broad areas of need section within the main tool. So we extracted the what will you see barriers and what what could help, what might help strategies for universal into this separate document. The universal barriers and strategies record and just quite simply added a couple of columns for notes really. So there's a start date, um, a, an end date and review and next steps. 
So the idea here is that it could be used to record and review strategies tried at a universal level. It could be a useful record of sort of teacher impact on progress as well, because it sort of it records the strategies tried as well as as well as the impact of them. It could also support in building a really nice specific clear picture of needs and the strategies that could support a child or young person. And actually where strategies have been tried, but there's little impact, this record might help in understanding where further assessment of needs might be required, such as Joe signposted to uh, earlier. So we do have suggested assessments within the main tool under each broad area of need. So those could be conducted um, if strategies here hadn't hadn't had the desired impact. And after, after that assessment, you know, you'd be looking at which strategies might be most helpful at an SEN support level. Really, it, it's a, it, this supporting document could support that recording of the graduated response at that universal or high quality teaching level without the need to complete lots of forms because most of the information is there. It could just be highlighted or ticked, for example. So again, used possibly or introduced certainly at that universal level. Uh, we have a pupil passport template. Uh, some, some schools uh, call this a pupil profile. So this could be used, adapted by schools to capture key information about a child or young person, such as likes, dislikes, strengths, barriers, as well as suggested classroom support strategies could be introduced at that, as I said, at that universal level, but also remain in place for SEN support and beyond. Lots of schools have an equivalent in place and we're not suggesting that it needs to be replaced with this version. It's simply a template that could be used, um, adapted, edited, uh, or just used to kind of check, check your own if you would like, would like to do that. And just thinking of those outside of schools, it's really useful for parent carers and colleagues that don't work within ed in education to have an awareness of this type of document and their purpose, because they're great opportunities to share key information with all staff that work with a children, a child or young person. So the idea is these are very pupil centred, so they would be, you know, they would be giving their perspective on a lot of these areas but also it could be complemented with information from the quick checkers or the universal barriers and strategies, as well as information from the school, parent carers, external professionals. It's designed to be a snapshot of that child or young person. So those that work with them within school have a good solid understanding of them in order to effectively support them. And I think particularly at the moment with lots of staff absence and changes of staffing and complications around COVID, this type of document should be really coming into their own for uh, those that perhaps don't usually teach children. If you've got this simple record uh, that they can have a quick look at before they, they work with a young person, that's only going to help in making that interaction with that child more successful. And for those that are working perhaps with a secondary colleagues or settings where there's more than one teacher, passports are particularly useful in that context as well. So starting to move towards an SEN support level of, su of supporting document, um, but still at that universal, this is a referral form essentially that could be used to ref where a teacher has felt they've kind of exhausted everything at, at that universal or high quality teaching level um, and they're looking for support from the SENCO to put some SEN support in place. So it's pink, it's indicated it could be used at universal level but where the concern is moving towards SEN support. So it could be used to capture those initial concerns where there's been limited impact and SEN support may be required. It's designed to be edited, adapted by schools, and it supports tracking the stages and actions uh, within that, that universal level. So the graduated response is recorded from the very first stage. You could use it alongside that universal barriers and strategies uh, record. 
this might not be needed if that you know record has had the desired impact and the strategies have meant the child's making the progress that you had hoped for but if not that a uh, universal barriers and strategies record could be used to help complete this and refer to the senco to refer, uh, investigate whether SEN support is required Again, some settings have something like this in place already, and we're not suggesting you must replace it. It's just a, a template or suggestion that we have available should you should schools really want to use it. OK, so we're now moving towards um, the into the SEN support remit of supporting documents. <laughs> So it's turquoise colour. Um, this is a, a sample assess, plan, do, review template. Again, this could already be in place in schools, but uh, there, it's there should it need to be or want to be used. The purpose of this document is to plan, monitor and review the support needed for students at SEN support level. And it's really, really essential that the information in an assess, plan, do, review record is very specific. Um, we want to make sure that those barriers are really pinned down, as well as the sp support strategies that are going to address those specific barriers. That's where the main Somerset's graduated response tool would come in um, within that uh, what will you see barriers and broad areas of need section, as well as perhaps some of the additional assessment materials we've suggested within the tool to help you identify those specific barriers and therefore relevant support strategies that could be captured here. These are sometimes called learning plans, education plans by schools, but actually what they what all of those things should be doing is capturing an assess plan do review. Um, process and cycle. It's really worth noting it doesn't cross over in terms of the, the information within it as the passport. It's a different purpose because this is about tar you know targets and specific courses of action. So I would suggest it would be very helpful to have both documents or equivalent for those at SEN support. And it's also, again, important to note that these are not necessarily in place for the whole of a child or young person's education because there's always end dates for review. In fact, the review is a very, very important part of the process. And they might move to a universal support level as per the assess, plan, do, review cycle I showed you from page eight earlier. So just to just to complete this, you would probably want to have the graduate response tool to hand um, and we do signpost it within this document and hyperlink it as well. OK, Joe's just going to talk you through the final of our supporting documents that we've got available there on the local offer for you. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you. So as the slide suggests, um, it's another um, document in terms of the supporting resources. And so in addition to the supporting documents referred to so far, I also want to signpost you to the service teams graduated response pyramid, as you can see from the slide. So the document provides an indication of what is on offer from county council service teams for their graduated response. It doesn't strictly follow levels of special educational need, but gives an indication of the support available to schools in a graduated way. It does not provide an exhaustive or detailed list, but rather an indication of service offer. And in addition, there are links for the service team pages for further signposting support, as you can see from the pink box just to the left of the pyramid. It's likely to be updated, ready for the new academic year, and as such, it will be reviewed, adjusted and updated as service team offers change. So this is going to be sort of quite a fluid document that will need to be reviewed when service changes alter. OK, so as you can see from the slide, we're referring you to um, any feedback. So as with the development process, we welcome your continued input and feedback for Somerset's graduated response tool. 
and we want the tool to be a live working document. So we use the feedback to inform updates. And the final page of the tool on page 81 has a link to a Microsoft form, as you can see from this slide, where you can provide your feedback and also obviously see the link on the slide. We will notify you all when it's been updated, but please do always access it on the local offer so that you know you're looking at the latest version. So as we've said sort of throughout the webinar, it would be really um, good idea to be able to um, save uh, the link onto your uh, favourites page. OK, so I'm now going to hand over to Zoe who will explain what we're working on next. OK. So there is more happening with this project as per the slide here. Uh, the Parent Carer Forum who have been involved with the redevelopment of the core standards and creation of Somerset's graduated response tool are leading on some work in creating some a parent leaflet and supporting video to help parents use and understand the tool. We mentioned right at the beginning that we've got the Parent Carer Launch webinars booked. Those are on the 25th of May. So we've got a daytime session and an evening session. The flyer is being circulated through Parent Carer Forum uh, channels and we will be sending it out to schools after uh, Easter so that you can share it with parents that way as well. Much like this, they'll sign up and, and there'll be a webinar session for them. Somerset's Young Persons Champions are working on a leaflet and video and something possibly for a social media platform. And then slightly longer term projects because they obviously take, take a, um, more time to develop. But in the pipeline, we are looking at a version that's more specific for the early years cohort and a version that is more specific for the post 16 cohort. Again, they will be created with, you know, with the relevant working groups and, and in that sort of co-production um, ethos that has, has been running through the development of the Somerset's Graduated Response Tool. Um, yeah, jo, I'm going to hand over to Jo because she had a meeting with um, the statutory SEND team around some information training sessions they've got that feed quite nicely into our webinar today. So Jo will just talk you through that now. Thank you, Zoe. Yeah, so as Zoe uh, explained, I met recently with um, uh, members of the SEND, um, SEND team, uh, Strategy SEND team. So we also just want to signpost you to some information sessions coming up around submitting quality education and healthcare plan um, applications, which will be run by Statutory SEND. And this follows on really well from Somerset's Graduated Response Tool webinar today, um, as this tool is focused on the initial universal and SEN support stages of the graduated response, which precede an education and healthcare needs assessment. So um, as the slide um, indicates, uh, please contact the email address on the slide. So in um, the green, um, box there uh, to book stating when you'd like to attend or look out for the links to the webinars in this week's send newsletter. So please just um, yeah, indicating um, from the information on the slide which, which uh, session you would like to attend. OK, just going to hand you back to Zoe who explain what we would like from you. So, so to finish, really, we we've kind of talked you through um, the context of the document, how it's how it's arrived at the Somerset Graduated Response Tool, how you might use it in your role. What we need you to do now re is share it with colleagues, parent carers, and professionals. The link again is on the slide there, and obviously then use it. Use it to support your role. It should be informing our work so that we ensure there is that consistent and high quality support for all children and young people in Somerset. We should be using it to inform our conversations, meetings and decision making um, around young people's education. 
We mentioned at the start, this PowerPoint is already sitting on the local offer should you want to share it with colleague, colleagues and talk through it yourself. And shortly after this final webinar, we'll be posting a recording of one of the webinars with Joe and I speaking over it so that uh, you could use that to share with colleagues um, or refer back to as well. We'd also like you just to think about whether you have any references to the Somerset course standards in any documents or on websites that, that you've got. And please replace that with Somerset's graduate response tool. The link to where you find Somerset's graduate response tool is exactly the same as the link you would have used for the course standards. So it's sitting in the same place on the local offer. So that, that hasn't changed. It's simply the name and obviously the information that's sitting up there. Um, you know, and actually, finally, just want to thank you for joining the webinar today. And we're so thrilled that we've had such a brilliant turnout. I think we're looking at almost 300 across the three web webinars, which is fantastic. Um, so we really look forward to seeing the tool in, in use within uh, within your roles and supporting children and young people in their schools in Somerset. We did finish a bit earlier, um, as Joe mentioned, that might be the case, uh, but, but we do would urge you to have a look at the tool and supporting documents uh, with the time that, that you know you had allocated for this webinar this afternoon. Joe, is there anything else you want to add or I've missed before we sort of I say we've think finished so. up? No, no. And I think again, um, thank you very much for attending today's webinar. We hope it's been uh, useful for you to, uh, to have a tour around the tool. Um, and we just look forward to you using the Somerset Graduated Response Tool in your roles, um, you know, moving forward and, and sharing, uh, sharing it uh, with other colleagues anywhere you can, uh, just get the message across to as many users as we can possibly do. So thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. And thank you for the thumbs up and applause that's yeah. coming up on the screen. <laughs> that's very much thank appreciated. You. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. And goodbye.